Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. We're streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com, PWRShow.com, and also on Blog Talk Radio. Damian Nelson here along with David Hero and the Cos, Frank Costantino. But none of us are important because our Oh, wait, wait, wait. Speak for yourself, champ. You're not important. Oh, I will be. Our most important person right now is the most important person in TNA Wrestling. He's the top babyface. Ken Anderson, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. Good morning, gentlemen. It is a and good morning. I use morning. that term loosely, of course. <laughs> morning or gentlemen? <laughs> um, maybe both. <laughs> Ken, thanks for coming on. And a uh, lot to talk about. We haven't talked to you in a while. And lots gone on in your life with your career in wrestling and uh, a lot happening, of course, coming off the heels of Bound for Glory. Let's first talk about that. Bound for Glory, of course, TNA's biggest pay-per-view of the year. You were in the main event along with Kurt Angle and Jeff Hardy. Obviously, we saw the revelation of who they was in that matchup, and that caused you. Gotcha. <laughs> right? What I, I mean, missed? No, yeah, he he got us. I mean, yeah. I never would have thought Jeff Hardy was going to be in they. That's yeah. the last person I thought it was going to be. And you know what? I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's real dark. It's a side of Jeff Hardy that nobody's ever seen. Mm-hmm. Obviously, shades back to uh, the formation of the NWO, which I think was uh, well done. Uh, it wasn't copying. It was paying tribute to, it seemed. Uh, but uh, how did it feel being in the ring at that moment, that moment that had been talked about for so long, that moment that uh, is the change that was coming to TNA? Well, you know, this is something that um, in, in the wrestling business, for not, uh, at least in the near future, you know, recently in the wrestling business, um, there aren't a lot of uh, pre-planning. You, you you basically show up and you find out what you're doing that day. You don't get, you know, nobody comes to you months ahead of time and tells you, you know, and tell you what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is something that was talked about for six months so it, it was really cool to see it executed, and uh, you know that's the way that wrestling used to be booked back in the day, and it was kind of nice to see that they're getting back to at least TNA is getting back to hey let's let's plan stuff out months in advance. That way we know what's going to happen, we know where we're going, and um. If something happens, we're we're ready for it. We can call an audible. And that's what happened in the past couple of weeks. You know, you take yeah. the brutal chair shot to the back of the head, and you know, all of a sudden, they got to find re- a replacement for Kenny Anderson, and they almost have to rush Matt Morgan. But Ken, tell us about the chair shot. I mean, it looked brutal on TV. It looked brutal when you're getting stitched up, and it, it's kept you off TV now for almost a month. Yeah, you know. The chair shot itself, I mean, it sucked, obviously, but (laughs) (laughs) um, I really didn't feel, I felt foggy afterwards, but I really didn't feel the effects until I took a week off, and then I got back in the ring, and I was wrestling AJ, and I couldn't, I just couldn't think on my feet. I'm usually pretty good at I'd like to think I'm pretty good at uh, <laughs> improving and coming up with things on the fly, and I just could not think of anything. And I think AJ was kind of getting frustrated because he didn't know what was going on. And I got back to the locker room, and I said, I told D'Lo, who, uh, you know, he's the agent, and I said, D'Lo, man, I'm, I've never experienced that in my life, and I've had a lot of concussions. And uh, he just said, you know what, you're on the first flight back home tomorrow, get checked, take as much time off as you need. And uh, never once criticized me, at least not to my face, Uh, (laughs) um, but never made me feel like, you know, and and this is just in the wrestling business, for some reason, uh, you're expected to be Superman. You know, a guy breaks his leg in the ring. He's expected to finish the match, and then expected to, if the uh, often leaves that, 
My dog <laughs> is eating the my mailman. food. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Well, what's the dog eating? You know, is, it, is it good? Yeah, it's uh, well, it was gonna be. breakfast for dinner. <laughs> it, Ken, you know what? Wait, 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 hold on. Your dog's name is Austin. Hey, give me a break, guys. Okay, we're all Mark. <laughs> Double tremendous. Hey, Ken. Hey, I got a funny story about that. We were at WrestleMania 22. Chicago. Uh, my wife, my dog, and I, <laughs> and I'm standing there talking to Stone Cold Steve Austin, just, you know, shooting the shit. And uh, <laughs> Tommy Dreamer comes up, sneaks up behind Steve, and whispers into his ear, ask him what his dog's name is. <laughs> 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 it's pretty funny. He laughed when he heard it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Good I wanna stuff. I wanna get back to uh your your concussion. Obviously there's news in the NFL about concussions. What do they do in T N A with uh wrestlers that have concussions? Is there something that says you can't get back into the ring until we get clearance from someone? Yeah. Okay. I have to get clearance um through my doctor. So that's what I'm pursuing tomorrow. So hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you know, I'm I'm scheduled to work these shows in Chicago and Nashville this week, and I'm I'm assuming that it's going to happen. But you know, I actually went in. My neck's been killing me, and I was really concerned because about six or seven years ago I actually uh, fractured a vertebrae in my neck. It was just a hairline fracture, and. I, I was just experiencing the same kind of pain, and I was just like, please don't let it be another broken neck. And uh, it turns out I had a CT scan of my brain and my neck. And, you know, my brain must have, I think it shrunk a little bit, but it's actually okay, and there's no bleeding on the brain. Um, I don't want any of that. And uh, nothing with the neck, so I think it's just musculature, uh, and I think I'm going to have to get a couple of good massages, which sounds good to me. <laughs> now, you said you've had concussions in the past. What does this do going forward? When you get back in the ring and you get back in action, which is going to be soon, what does it do to your psyche while you're in there knowing that this risk is not just there but has recently happened? You know, I think in our business – there's always a risk. And if you live your life like that, always looking over your shoulder and worrying, oh, am I going to get hurt? Then you're uh, you're not going to perform at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And uh, chances are you're probably going to get injured. And dang it, guys, I'm, I'm injury prone enough the way it is. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, that, you, that, that you has can... not popped up in the past month, though. <laughs> no one has been saying it. Well, it's funny because I was expecting, uh, and I obviously I don't. Again, I don't read the stuff, but um, well, people tweeted in the to past. You. Uh, you know, if somebody were to whack me in the face with a sledgehammer, uh, I would be injury prone. Right. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, you know what? The, the ring of that point, and, and people use that word a lot. You know, all the all the, the armchair quarterbacks and the Monday morning critics. It, it, to to say someone in the in the wrestling business or any sport for that matter is injury prone, I don't understand how that's possible. Because when you're subjected to the situations that you're subjected to, an injury is not just likely; it's just bound to happen. It's a matter of time. So I'm not sure yeah. how anyone could call someone injury prone because you look at you know a lot of other people in the business who have had a ton of injuries and many times I, I would venture to say we don't hear about a lot of the injuries that happen to a lot of the wrestlers but th that word injury prone obviously we laugh about it but what does it mean when you hear it in regards to you uh you know it kind of curls my blood a little bit because i think that every wrestler on planet earth 
is injury prone mm-hmm. because of the nature of the business that we are in. Um, I don't know of anybody that's never had an injury. And I know a lot of guys that have injuries every year. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know. Undertaker, every year. Every year. Right around Ray Mysterio, every year. Mm-hmm. Batista, for a while, every year. Yep. A couple times a year sometimes, you know. <laughs> and uh, Mark Henry. Um, Even Triple H. Triple H. But you know what? It's just, you you push it. These guys, these these are all guys who... Give it 110% in the ring every night. You're bound to be injured at some point. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of are you going to be able to work through that injury or are you going to have to take time off? And hopefully, I mean, you know, it's the old saying, uh, are you hurt or are you injured? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just got a, a tweet in uh, from Saul Perez Jr. who says a question for you. Uh, what did you think of the – concussion storyline with Matt Morgan and Eric Bischoff. Uh, with Bischoff basically saying he was going to put you in the match uh, at turning point and Matt Morgan stepping up to defend the injury and saying that uh, you shouldn't be put in the match. They sort of made a story about it over a course of an entire impact a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, how did that strike you? I like it. I like it because you know uh, this kind of stuff goes on in the real world. And art imitates life, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, basically, I think it's it serves, you know, it's, it's how do I say this? Um, it serves, you know, to... It's helping Morgan. What's that? It's helping Matt Morgan. Well, no, no, I, I'm not. Ta- I'm not talking about helping Matt Morgan. I'm talking about it. Basically, it helps. I think the business, and I help. It helps uh, the fans maybe gain some kind of an awareness. Uh, hey, these guys aren't invincible. Hey, uh, you can't. You know, and I've said this before. You can't wrestle 250 days a year anymore. And I applaud the guys that came before us in the business. But, you know, science has changed and science has made advances and scientists have found out that this stuff, you know, concussions can give you long-term lasting effects. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be, you know, telling the same story over and over and over again (laughs) when I'm 50. (laughs) And I don't want to, you know, I want to be able to, you know, take care of my kids and have conversations with my wife and not experience Muhammad Ali syndrome. You right. Know? And, um, we're, we're, go ahead. We just received a, a, another tweet. We've just received a tweet from not the general manager. Uh, the username, the new Ali, says uh, Ken Anderson is not injury prone. He is champion prone and greatness prone. Just I agree wholeheartedly. Thank <laughs> we, you. We do have to take a quick time out. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about TNA reaction, some of the recent departures from TNA, and also a big matchup you have coming December 4th here in Milwaukee. This is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com. Season never ends. Talk Packers football every day on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com, PWRShow.com, and on Blog Talk Radio. We're live Wednesday, November 10, 2010. Damian Nelson here along with David Hero and uh, the cause, Frank Costantino. But our guest right now is of TNA Wrestling, Ken Anderson. Mr. Anderson, welcome back to the show. Yeah. And- you know what, i I, I got to give you an opportunity here because we were talking about your dog, Austin, and his name and, and, and the story associated with that. Do you ever know David Hero's dog's name? Hogan. <laughs> oh, <we> see? <laughs> see? But that doesn't surprise Ken because Cal's named after Superman, so that's just how it works around my house. You should have seen the uh, the light bulb go off over my head 
I'm not a big comic book fan, but uh, I was reading a comic book on my iPad, and I saw, you know, Cal L. <laughs> there was some reference to Cal L, uh, you know, Baby Superman, and I was like, I immediately texted Dave, and I'm like, what's Cal's middle initial? <laughs> he said L, and ha, ha, ha. Tremendous. Tremendous. <laughs> um, Ken, a lot of people have uh, recently parted ways with TNA Wrestling, and uh, we'll go over some of the names and just want to get your thoughts on, on what impact it might have on the company with some of these people being gone. Um, and I'll go in order of in importance to their place in the company at the time of their departure, but uh, Raven, uh, recently gone. Sabu, gone as of this past Sunday's pay-per-view. Team 3D, retiring after losing on the pay-per-view this past Sunday night. And Kevin Nash, who was on this program a couple of weeks ago, also at this point gone from TNA Wrestling. Now, Kevin Nash, obviously one of those people who a lot of people look up to and get advice from by being there uh, in TNA in the locker room with them. What, what kind of impact overall do you think these departures will have from the company going forward? You know, I, I think that things always have to change and evolve. Um, you look at wrestling over the course of the years, it's always been of a revolving door. I remember being in WWE, and every year they would, or every six months, it seemed they would put out those uh, those programs with all the superstars in it. And I remember... You know, literally, if you'd open up a program that was a year old, there would be 50% of the people would be, would be gone. And that's just the way that it is in the wrestling business. Um, these people, I'm assuming you've not seen the last of any of them. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I think it keeps everybody competitive. There's a certain degree of keeping everybody on their toes. Um like you know, with, like with it sucks. I never like to see one of my brothers, uh, you know, lose a job. Right. Um, but, you know, I've been on the outside looking in. And, uh, you know, it for me, it drove me, and hopefully it'll drive those guys to take strides, do whatever is necessary to get back. I think one of the more surprising was, uh, was Eric Young. Now, his contract just expired. They haven't worked out, worked out a, a new deal yet, but... You know, when we saw him at the at the house shows in the scene teaming up with OJ, it was rather interesting. I mean, he was extremely <laughs> talented. In Those the- were my favorite matches. That whole loop, the the OJ, Eric Young, Beer Money matches were and, to die for. And it seemed we're at two of the shows in that loop, and it seemed like the fans solidly behind Eric Young as well. Yeah, you I mean, know that guy. Not just for him, but oh, I mean, he was over. He is one of my favorite talents in TNA. Uh, I have several, but he, he's definitely up there, and I always try to tell him. Um, not that it really means anything, but I, I always try to tell him, dude, I loved what you did tonight. You know, speaking of favorite talents, you know, when you come back, it looks like you'll be aligned with Samoa Joe, Matt Morgan, RVD, and, and the Pope against Immortal. <laughs> That's your boy. <laughs> you love him. Hey, uh-huh. Hope. Yes. You know. You know. We've we've kind of buried the hatchet for a little while. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Until it was yeah, off the know. air. <laughs> that's how long. But that I mean, lasted. I mean, that's an interesting group of 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 you guys, which will eventually team well, a, a, against the mortal. You guys cleared the air, but I heard you uh, just went and you know stepped all over that again. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, he should have he should have been the guy. To wrestle Jeff Hardy at the pay-per-view, yeah, but oh. he wasn't ready yet, so they put Matt Morgan there. That's just that's just one. That's just my opinion. <laughs> I love the silence with everybody here. Hey, we, no, you know, that's you and Pope thing. Hey, you guys work it out. It's just see once again, Ken, you screwed opinion. this whole thing up <laughs> because this never would have been an issue, you know. But you decided to take a month off of TV. Wow. See, you guys always have to stick me with these <laughs> controversial questions. You can never just ask me, how's your day going? Ken, how's your day? How's dinner? <laughs> no, how's breakfast? Yeah. Uh-huh. It was good. 
non-controversial. We'll ask you this question about WWE, and you may or may not know, but they have this they have the stand up for WWE campaign, basically tied to uh, Linda McMahon's run for Senate. But a good campaign they're doing, basically giving a little bit of insight as to the good WWE does and wrestling does in general. And wrestling doesn't get enough credit for the good that they do, whether it be visiting kids in hospitals or charitable work, or much like TNA's uh, Stop the Bullying campaign. But what was your take on Linda McMahon's run for Senate and her subsequent loss? You know, I think that Linda McMahon was always um, – she was always really great to me. And I think that she's a good person. And uh, I think it would have been nice to see her, um, you know, do something on her own. You know, I mean, obviously she – I'm not trying to say that she's not doing something on her own. She's a successful businesswoman. But uh, something completely away from the wrestling business, you know, almost completely on her own, it would have it been nice. But, uh, uh, you know, it's it's one one loss. And, sh- heck, I've, I've it's had... a $70 million loss. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> win or lose, but that's still seventy million dollars. I'm thinking they can afford it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of glow sticks, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, is that is that something you know in in the workplace? Uh, they always say don't don't talk about politics. When you're on the road with with the guys or in the locker room, is politics ever spoken, or is it just strictly hey, what's going on, you know, match wise? Politics guys- like. As Washington politics, or <laughs> well, like anything, <laughs> yeah. Clarify, Frank. <laughs> well, you know, because they, they always say you want know, to keep a, a tight locker room, and you have you, you guys want to talk with and stuff like that. But Why would that, anybody talk politics, Frank? I'm asking the question. I personally, I love talking politics. You know, Dave Chappelle said it best. He's like, <laughs> I think you guys. I heard a giggle, so I now you guys know what I'm putting to. <laughs> That's Damien. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I can say it uh, or how far I can go, but you know, he basically said there there was a gentleman uh, trying to tell somebody about his sexual life with his wife, and a guy asked him, uh, "Hey, by the way, who did you vote for?" Oh, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa! Why do you got to get so personal? Uh, you know, I'm trying to tell you that I was having sex with my wife. <laughs> you know, and it's just like for some reason that seems to be taboo. Yeah. And you know, my something that I've noticed a lot in the last couple of years is that if you have differing political views, I hate you. Right. You know, it's not hey, I disagree with you. Cuz I disagree with people all the time. Mhm. And I look at it and I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else, but that's the way that I look at it. Hey, I disagree with you, but there might be other things that I like about you, and um, we can agree to disagree. But I personally, I love politics. I watch it, you know, 24/7. I follow it. I have about 20 or 30 books on my Kindle and my uh, my iPad alone, and then I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of political books. Um, you know, the one big problem, Ken, that I've noticed is. Most people don't make the effort to educate themselves enough to actually speak about politics. And you say, you know, you've got books, and, and obviously you do your research, but yep. that's, I think that's what leads to the anger is people yes. just don't see why somebody doesn't see it their way, and they really don't even know what their way might be. Well, just uh, just you shut up. You know, it's that kind yeah. of yeah. mentality. Yep. Um, that's what Damien tells me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, apparently, uh, uh, that's what Cal tells you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. No, Cal says something else that you taught him. <laughs> Thanks, Cal. Again, we got about three minutes left. Two quick things. Um, you're going to be uh, in at Chicago. Brawl. Well, he'll be at the Odium on Saturday. PowerWrestling.com, Villa Park. And then December 4th, big story, big news, the main event, Blizzard Brawl 6. Ken yeah, Anderson baby. against Matt Hardy. Matt's very first appearance since being released by WWE. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting match because you guys are actually pretty good friends. Yeah, I just got a text from him the other day. Said, uh, "Looks like we're gonna be dancing again together. Looking <laughs> forward to it." Mm-hmm. So, Matt and I, I honestly like I, he was one of my favorite guys to work with in the WWE, and uh, I've had ooh, another one of my favorite stories was uh, 
I was scheduled to work with a local guy. Matt Hardy was wrestle was wrestling Psychosis right after me or right before me, and uh, so it was like uh, segment one was in the ring, and it was like a King Booker, you know, Shakespeare segment. <laughs> King Booker and all of his courts and his jesters and everything like that, you know, like, and, uh, segment two was me. Segment three was, uh, was Matt. And all of a sudden Matt came running up to me. He goes, Hey, did you hear? And I said, what? He goes, did you hear? Hey, we've got a three segment match on tonight and we're on next. And I went, yeah, <laughs> you're kidding me. He goes, I'm not kidding. And he stormed away from me. And right then and there, Johnny Ace walked around the, corner and said okay guys let's go let's go let's go let's get a finish let's it was, it was pretty funny stuff we went out there and we really uh i i thought we had a good match and matt agreed and uh the agents agreed too we were just calling everything on the fly we literally went out there with nothing in our heads and just wrestled it's gonna be a great match at blizzard brawl 6 december 4th blizzardbrawl.com for tickets and uh ken just so we got a message ref kyle says hello <laughs> <laughs> really? That, that surprises me. <laughs> it really does. I wasn't expecting that. Ken Anderson, always a treat to have you on the show. We wish you the best Thanks, in your recovery yeah. from your recent yeah, well, concussion yeah. and injury. We'll see you Saturday at uh, the POWW event, and then, of course, on December 4th uh, at Blizzard Brawl 6 in Waukesha. Sounds great, guys. Ken right, Anderson, thank you. here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we are live on 540 ESPN, streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com.